we're going to be doing a subcuticular stitch. Remember what I mentioned in class that the subcuticular stitch is a stitch that's designed to have minimal exposure on the skin surface. So I'm cutting through the skin. Remember this can be done with an elliptical excision or it can be done with a, just a straight incision like I'm doing here. It can be done either way. Remember this stitch is not very strong. It should not be done in an area of high tension unless you're very careful to make sure that you protect the area with uh, steri strips or a tegaderm, something like this to, to give the support to the actual tissue itself. Now, when we start the stitch, since it is a running stitch, subcuticular stitch is one of the running stitches, we typically start at one end. And again, I want to emphasize that if you're right-handed, you're holding the, this, the needle in, in the right hand and the needle holder in the right hand, and you typically work from the left side to the right side. I also like to line up my needle holder with my needle coming out directly 90 degrees off. So, so by lining this up perpendicular to the incision, I know that my needle is going in parallel to the incision line. If this is angled off, something to one side or the other, then we definitely have some trouble. So, and if you notice that your needle is flopping around a little bit, move your needle further down so it's locked into a wider portion. Then you tend, will tend to notice that it tends to be much more stable. Okay? <clears throat> These are just some tips. So we start at the end, about a quarter of an inch, half an inch back from the end. I want to pop up right up in the corner, like such, support it with my needle, my needle forceps, I pull the thread through. I do not typically attach or tie off this first end until I complete the stitch because I may need to pull from both ends of the stitch if it's a longer incision. My approach to putting the stitch in is I basically hold this in a constant position and I raise up one side or the other side. By raising the side up, I basically turn it so the dermis is facing up, which then allows me to stick my needle through. Again, I'm controlling the depth of my needle, popping it out. The bigger, deep, deeper uh, dig I, I make into the dermis is going to give me a stitch that's further apart. The shallower I go into the dermis, the closer together the stitches will be. So this is something you want to want to take into consideration because you're looking for the stitches to be approximately an eighth, so eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. So once I go on one side, I kind of pull it across to see where I need to be lining up on the other side. I turn the skin up on that side, and then I just basically go in and dig in that skin a little bit on that side, and then pop out like such on the other side. And I want to be directly across from my from where it came out on the other side. So what I'm actually shooting for here is in some cases you may want to actually go back a little bit. Notice here, this looks like it's going a little bit forward, so I should have started back just a snitch further back on that. I'll see if I can correct that for the rest of them, but it gives you an idea of some of the pitfalls associated with this. Pull it across so I see where I want to be. Pull the skin up. Again, I'm going to back up a little bit here to make sure. Coming through properly. Come out the side of the dermis. And you also want to maintain the same depth on both sides. If you're higher on one side than on the other, like what we experienced with the three-point and the four-point corner stitch, you're going to have a problem in that you will notice that the one level will be higher than one side will be higher than the other side will be. So going in here on the dermis, so pulling the skin, popping through. Okay, again. And if I come out the top, I'm not, if I come out the top, I can just back my needle up and realign so they come out the side. Okay, see how this is going. See the pattern that's being developed here. I pull across to see where I am. I pick the skin up on the other side. Go in the dermis. Advance and pop out the other side. Again, while I'm flexing my needle this direction, I'm pushing it forward at the same time. If you do those in, in combination, it decreases the risk of, of bending the needle. Okay. Again, I see where it's coming across there. Lift up the other side again. Come back again. Go in the dermis. Notice I'm kind of supporting it like such, and then I'm just kind of guiding my needle through to make sure it comes out the side, okay, rather than the top. If it does come out the top, like I said, just back your needle up and go ahead and reposition again. 
across one side to the other, going in the skin there, move forward, pop out. the other side. And now we're getting close to the end, so I'm going to be careful as to how I want to do this on the end. Okay. Pull through. Okay, now if you look at the threads, notice the threads are going parallel to each other across like such. You don't want the threads going in an angle like such back and forth. If you do that, sometimes you take too big a bite or reach ahead and it, and it come, comes back forward like that. When you pull it together, you can have places where it's real close together and it's real wide on the other side. And where it's wide, that's going to tend to buckle and turn inward, which you don't, you don't want to do. So you want to try to make sure your lines are pretty parallel to each other. When I get close to the end now, I'm just going to go under the skin, pop up about a quarter of an inch back from the end, through the skin, Okay, and then I take the stitch, pull it together, and that's what it looks like when it's closed up. Okay, I can go back to the beginning and tie off the first end. Remember how we do the knots here? Grab, second knot off, third knot off. I always snip it and cut the loop like such. I snug up the other side, making sure everything is nice and smooth and level, looking pretty good here. Three wraps, snug up to the skin level, grab right at the skin to keep tension on it, slide off my first knot. Okay, like such. Second wrap and my third wrap, grabbing the loop. Okay. This would then be followed by stereo strips placed across this one. As you can see, I can, pull, I can kind of pull it open a little bit. So the stereo strips would go across and, and keep it uh, contained and controlled until the healing has taken place. To remove the stitch is very simple. You just pick up one end of the stitch, snip it, grab the other end, and pull it back through. Grab with bear. And it doesn't want to come, of course. There we go. And that's it. The thread comes through. If you have a long stitch, you can sometimes go up in the center, actually come over to a, a stitch on the outside area to help pull it together again, go back under, then continue weaving back and forth across. So this is a subcuticular stitch.